Hey, this is Shrike. Just wanted to show you off one of the new features here in Resonite, a component called Render Transform Override. It's useful for being able to affect uh, this the position, rotation, or scale of meshes depending on exactly the context they're being viewed in, such as your local view. In this case, an example here would be scaling down the head or hair mesh of an avatar such as this key to volley, which would otherwise be in your view. If I equip the key to volley here, you'll see that the hair is just right there getting in the way. Really annoying. No one wants that. Maybe a few people, but, you know, I say generally most people don't want that to be in their view. So, so to work around that now, what we can do is open an inspector on their head, which I already have here. I have their head selected and focused. We can go to Attach Component, go down to Rendering, and then Render Transform Override. Just double select that, and it'll show up here. You'll see a few options in the component context, defaulting the user view, which in that case is your own view as you see it just from the camera, like user view for me right now would just be the view you're seeing with my nose there at the bottom, my HUD, everything. Yep. There's also external view, which would be third person uh, and desktop view, such as this. That's the external view. Camera self-explanatory is the view camera see. And mirrors, which is when you use a mirror, such as the one I have over all the way over there. There's also portals, which are kind of a special kind of mirror, sort of, except the uh, place you're seeing from isn't necessarily where the mirror actually is. Render to asset, I think that's um, not actually sure. I think that might just be a node. But user view is what we really want. Now we can go ahead and uh, let's see, we already have it on the head here. We can go ahead and enable scale override, which will mean that. You're overriding the scale for the user's view when they have it equipped. Actually, even just active, like if I grab this right now, well, you'll see the edges of vanishes. It's kind of funny. I'll actually show you a bit method to work around that happening in a moment. You see that the scale defaults is zero, zero, zero. I kind of, it's probably fine to leave like that, but I kind of do just change it to a little bit higher myself, 0.1. Still very amusing to look at. Just a tiny little head there. Now there is one other step we need to worry about. You see a skin mesh renderer listed at the bottom? We want to add to that and then grab whatever meshes are being affected by this override and add them to it. Otherwise you get weird behavior such as it not necessarily taking effect when it should. You may see it like your head shrunken in all contexts instead of just the one you list. So in this case we're affecting the head, which would be on the body mesh. I can just grab the body from the list there. That's the slot the mesh renderer is on. Throw it in that list. You can also grab the rigged hair here and throw that on there. And while not active, I also have some disabled extra hair here, so we might as well throw that on too. So now you see here we have all three meshes which might be affected by this override in the list. If I go in the avatar now, you'll see that the hair is gone, no longer in the view. If I go to my third person camera, let me switch. Yep. It's always hard to use. Let me, there we go. Or not. <laughs> I can never manage to just flip it around to the front when I want to. <sighs> nope, even drone mode won't let me do it, but you can still see it there. <laughs> Hop back to my own avatar now, and I'll kind of just address this issue where when you grab it, it still shrinks anyway. That's because you're going to start the active user of the avatar now. I'm in my. Uh, what is it called again? User view context. So it had shrunken for me. What I've done to get around this is they're not there. Oh, grab the body mesh renderer slot, open that up. You scroll down all the way. All the way. There it is. You'll find a simple white indicator eventually. When you're not when you are in the avatar, this user will be written with your user ID. When you're not in it, it's just null. We can take advantage of that to enable and disable this component when we don't need it. Oops, actually, I don't need to do that. That's just old habits. I already have this component browser here. I can go back and go to transform. Another transform, the component we need to enable this switching, depending on whether in it or not, is under drivers. 
and it's called reference equality driver. Type in the T's field here, user with an uppercase U, and double click on that to add it. You'll see a few options here for the target reference. We want that user slot on the simple away indicator. It doesn't have to be under Bondi, it can be any simple away indicator if your avatar is using. Reference, you can just leave null. Target, we want to be the enabled field on the render transform override. And then we want to invert that. So that way, when the user on simple way indicator is null, this goes false because of the invert. When it's not null, it'll just be true. So now I can grab this. It works just fine. The head isn't shrunken all weirdly. But if I go in there, the hair is still gone. If I go into the person, you can see it there kind of. Oh, now it lets me do it. Yeah, well, whatever. It's there. <laughs> yeah, that's all. And that's how to use render transform override. Have a good time in Resonate.